Yo, yo, what's going on? Hold on, let me get some lights in here. Howdy, what's going on in my friends, my people? Who do we got in here? How's the audio? Tom, how you doing? Sean, how are you? Guys, it's a pleasure. Hi, damn, full house. Good, 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 good. Roger, pleasure. Jack, how you doing? Robin, what's up? Good, good, good. Let me know uh, where are you guys all coming in from. All right, Toronto. Manchester. Man, I got so many students in England. It's wild. Gilbert. The luck of the Irish. William of Wallace. What's up, Gee Gee? Is it Gee or Guy? No, Gee is French, isn't it? Melbourne. Holy, holy moly. That's got to be an odd time for you. Kuala Lumpur. Hey, Shannon. How are you? Finland. India, good. Dallas, Texas, awesome. Man, a lot of traders in Dallas, Texas. That's probably the number one spot I've noticed uh, in the United States for at least our neck of the woods traders. Everybody's in Dallas. My business partner lives in Dallas. Got, I must have 50 students over that way. Orlando, the swamp, baby, the swamp. Cool. Well, guys, let's talk a little bit about some trading. I know uh, we'll chit chat a little bit later if that's cool with you. And uh, we'll get this party going. Let me get my lucky hat on here the right way. And let's get this party started. So, guys, uh, a few things we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk a little bit about a different trading setup. So, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about uh, ORBs and gappers and things of that nature. But today we're going to flip it around and talk a little bit about pullback trading. You know, I have a few techniques that I use uh, to nail pullbacks in stocks and also in cryptos uh, that work really, really well. And then uh, we're going to talk about uh, our trading challenge that we've got going on. You know, I've been on the hunt. Uh, as you guys probably know, if you don't if you're not familiar with uh, who I am or uh, what I do, uh, out of the 12 employees I have, uh, seven of them have been former students of mine or people that uh, have been students of mine. So the people that man my chat room, uh, man our crypto chat room, do our webinars, uh, my business partner, uh, Mary Bath, who was my first student, uh, everybody that pretty much works for me beyond uh, the four knuckleheads that you always see me running around with, uh, who are my childhood best friends, are actually students of mine. And the guy that's probably answering the questions uh, in this webinar, his name is Josh. He's 21 years old. Uh, he was one of my students when he was 16. Uh, he's just finishing up college and getting ready uh, for a career in full-time trading, along with uh, helping me uh, man uh, our chat room and do webinars. And also he's like a marketing uh, he's got a knack for marketing, and so he's been working with me, and so it, it's pretty cool. So we've got a trading challenge coming on, uh, as uh, as you guys probably see everywhere. Uh, we're growing, and I'm looking to expand my team, and so we're going to be running an awesome trading challenge where uh, the winner will be mentored by me, and uh, hopefully if the guy or gal is worth a damn, uh, maybe we'll have a spot on our team for this person as uh, trading is awesome, but trading and working uh, in a cool business like ours, I don't know, I'm biased, 
but that's pretty cool also. And uh, that's going to be uh, just fantastic. So let's talk a, a little bit about trading. Uh, for those of you guys, can you just uh, raise your hand if you're just brand new to any of this or uh, brand new, first time in the webinar? Uh, that way I know to go a little bit slow. Uh, I know for some of you old time students, you guys know how I talk, but uh, if anybody's brand new, I may be a little bit, uh, I'm a fast talker, a loud and fast talker. Uh, Roger, welcome. Uh, by the way, Big Mike, uh, good to see you. Good, good, good. Ro Roger, Robert, cool, cool, cool. Mike, hello. Sean, great. Oh, man. Vaisali, hello. Good, 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 man. Oh, I'm pumped. Man, we got a lot of Indians here. I don't know if that's because I'm Indian or just Indians love to trade, but it's good to see everybody. <laughs> I hate them. What's going on? So, guys, welcome. Uh, I'm Kunal. I'm the CEO of this company. I won't bore you too much with my resume because uh, by the end of the by the end of the webinar, you'll know. And uh, it's going to be awesome that what we got going. But I started this business 10 years ago, and uh, holy crap, uh, I still dress the same but I've aged slightly and uh, it's cool that after 10 years, I get so many people coming into these webinars ready to learn uh, how to shred. And uh, we've got a, a cool, cool little program planned for you guys today. So stick around uh, to the end for the question and answer. Uh, I'll be giving away a couple prizes. I got these brand new hats, man. This is a monster green, monster green bulls on Wall Street. You guys like that? That's a trucker hat. That's my summer hat. I just had these made. Um, I usually get fluorescent yellow for the summer or pink, but uh, this year I got monster green. So we'll be giving away uh, a couple a couple hats, and uh, we'll get this thing going, man. You always need cool hats during the summertime because if you're like me and you don't have hair, you go out in that sun, your scalp's getting a little bit red, isn't it? <laughs> The, the, the plight of an Indian, for those of you guys that don't know any Indians, the plight of an Indian is that we're really good at math. We lose our hair, but then we grow hair everywhere else as we get older. It's just like one of God's weird, weird tricks that he does, and we just have to live with it. But my mom always says, you may not have had good hair, but you are very good at math. And so that's the trade-off. If some people got great hair, they're not good at math. But the guy that's got great hair and is good at math, you end up like Elon Musk. You just end up doing some really cool stuff. So stick around for the q and I've got some cool gear, some different things that we're going to give away. I even got hot pink Bulls on Wall Street hats for the ladies uh, that need hats for the summer. And I'm going to show you how to learn how to win our talent search. But before we even get into all that fun stuff, let's talk a little bit about trading because in the end, that's what we're here to do. You can have all the hats in the world, but you can buy as many hats as you want if you know how to trade. So let's talk a little bit about topics for today. We're going to learn how to trade at the open, but we're going to talk a little bit different setup uh, than we normally do which we focus on a lot is the ORB. Today, we're going to focus on pullbacks. We're going to talk a little bit about the best ways to enter and exit stocks. And then I'm going to show you how to win our trading challenge. We'll do a little Q&A. And then, uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit crypto trading. Guys, uh, I'm a big believer in cryptocurrency markets. Um, I've been trading stocks since literally college. Uh, that was a many, many moons ago. And I've been trading stocks ever since. You know, I tried trading futures. It's pretty easy. I tried trading options. It's all right. Uh, I tried trading a little Forex. None of that stuff is as exciting as stocks. The stock market is really the end all, right? You don't grow up when you're a kid and be like, man, I want to be a really good Forex trader. Right. Nobody thinks like that. Right. You want to be like Warren Buffett or whoever. Right. You grow up thinking, man, I'm going to make money in stocks. And so uh, stocks has always been the end game, the start game. It's the hottest game in town. But 
in the last year I've been trading cryptocurrency and I'll tell you what, my earnings in cryptocurrency exceeded the last few years of stocks combined, uh, just doing a handful of simple strategies that I actually do in stocks because it's all the same. Trading is trading. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about cryptocurrency because, man, I think it's a wealth generating effect. I do longer trades in cryptocurrency, stuff that lasts for three, four, five days, where in stocks, you know, you're making more trades that could go for like, say, 15 minutes, 30 minutes sometimes, where in cryptocurrency, it, the, every day they move bigger in range, but because it's a 24 hour market, what ends up happening is they just move damn slow. They really do. And so it's great. Cryptos is great for people that want to generate wealth with longer trades versus, you know, kind of that daily income. And then it's great for people with small accounts because they don't have a pattern day trade rule. Um, they have bigger percentage gainers. And then there's a whole uh, subset of cryptocurrencies that are really like in the 50 cent dollar, $2, $3 range that are actually uh, interesting. Where in the stock market, if something is 50 cents, it's because it's a turd, it's going to zero. And that's the nature of the stock market. See, the stock market values everything for what it's worth, right? So the stock market, if something's 50 cents or a dollar, it may move around a little bit every blue moon, it gets pumped, but most likely it's just a huge, gigantic, flaming, turd a turdzilla i'm not talking about american turd i'm talking about a garlicky turmeric spiced indian turd that's what happens in the stock market but in cryptocurrency none of the cryptocurrencies are worth anything none of them are worth anything and so when you get one that's 50 cents or a dollar two dollars it could be something hot someday because in cryptocurrency right now because it's a brand new field Nobody really knows what anything is going on. Guess what happens? Some of those will have some awesome values. I'm going to give you a few uh, maybe potential picks that I'm watching, and we'll get this thing going. My personal belief is that you've got to learn how to trade both. But in general, you guys have to learn how to trade. You have to learn how to trade. In the next 20 years, We'll probably not have social security or those type of uh, benefits that the government gives us for retirement. Um, there'll be a lot of different things changing and you already see them changing right now, right? We're on our own, we're on our own. And if any of you guys have financial advisors, you know, they charge you a lot of fees and they're not very good. So whether you wanna be a day trader or you just wanna take care of your longer term investments, your retirement, uh, the future is for your kids' tuitions and things like that. Uh, trading is something that everybody should have an idea about whether they do it actively or not. You need to know it because if somebody else is doing it for you, you better damn well know if they're any good and you better be monitoring them. And so trading is a little bit for some, everybody. You know, even my dad, he's 64 years old. I'm always trying to teach him stuff on trading, right? Because he's getting to that age where he's got to really take control of this stuff. And he likes to do his own investments. And so I'm always teaching him trading. No matter what age you are, you've got to learn this. But let's get into the real game that we're doing, which is a, a trading setup that I've been using every day. So let's talk a little bit about who we are as traders, first of all. So I trade momentum. I trade trends. I trade momentum. I am looking for anything that can be explosive, okay? So no slow trading, no value investing. I don't care about dividends. Don't Definitely don't care about fundamentals. I'm looking for big percentage gainers. I'm looking for them quickly because that's how you grow a small account into a bigger account. In the end though, any of us, unless you have millions of dollars, we're considered small accounts, right? Compared to everybody else. And so momentum trading is really the foundation for how you can build your account. When I was a new trader, I tried everything. I tried value investing, why? Because as a kid, you always grow up reading 
Warren Buffett books or Benjamin Graham books, right? So those famous investors. But what you find out is when you invest and you only have 2,000 bucks, that 10% a year doesn't go very fast, does it? It doesn't go very fast. And so that would take you 100 years before you have what you need to have. So I tried everything. But one thing that I noticed in the markets when I would run through different stocks is that every day there's stocks that move up 10%, 15%, 20% in the course of a day or a week or even more. And so I started thinking like, well, what if I could just hit that one of those every day or a few of those every week? Well, all of a sudden, that's a lot better than you know me buying Bank of America and watching it move up or down 10 cents every day. That's something that I can use right now to grow and build my account and leave room for income and wealth generation and all that other fun stuff. And so what we do is trade momentum. I primarily day trade when I'm looking in the stock market. So there's two types of trading. There is swing trading, which is your multi-day holds, your two, three, four, five day holds, which I do. I do them in my retirement accounts. And I do them in my crypto accounts. That's your wealth generating effect, those bigger percentage gains. Then for my daily income, the stuff that pays for your hot cars, your boats, your ladies, whatever it is that you're interested in, your mortgage, that's day trading. That's your daily income. So when you're day trading, it's very important to focus in on price patterns. When I was a new trader, something would drop down and look cheap, I would buy it. Or if somebody was talking about something on the news, I would want it. If I got a tip, I would buy it. But that buying has no context. It has no structure. Without context and structure, there is no trade. And so what I started to realize once I started to study trading, and then I met my mentor, Paul. Paul works for us at Bulls on Wall Street. He's my mentor, Paul Singh, one of the best longer term traders you will ever see. And when I met my mentor and I, I, I learned different things from him, he taught me one thing. He said, well, let me look at when I met Paul and I was struggling as a trader for years. I met Paul. He said, let me look at your trades. Let's see what's going on. I said, OK, here you are. He goes, oh, shit. I'm like, what? What? He's like, you don't know anything about trading. And I'm like, uh, I trade every day. What are you talking about? He goes, you have a knack for sure finding some stocks, getting into momentum, but you don't have any rules. You don't have a system. I go, yeah, I got stuff like that. He goes, all right, well, what is your rule for when you're up 20% on a stock? Like, what do you do with it? I'm like, well, you know, I kind of, uh, you know, it's not a system. I'm like, shit. He goes, well, if, Canel, if you found something that was a really hot opportunity with low risk, how many shares would you buy? I said, well, probably a thousand. He goes, why? No, no, it's a nice number, right? <laughs> I didn't have a system for it. Even the number of shares you buy, you have to have a system. So I said, okay, okay, so I don't know anything about trading, maybe. He goes, Canal, this is how trading works. He goes, everything in trading is dumbed down into a recipe. He goes, when you cook something, you have a recipe, right? You open a cookbook and you have a very specific recipe. You have, when you're trying to bake a cake, what do you have? If you open a cookbook, look how specific it is. You have all your ingredients listed. Then you have a very, very specific order of what you're supposed to do. I do three tablespoons of sugar, this much flour. I bake it at this. I do this. I let it cool for this. Right? It's very specific. You don't see a recipe with like three things, do you? Just three words, three sentences? No, a recipe, even the simplest thing is like, dun, 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 dun. It's a checklist. He goes, that's what trading is. If you have only three things, then your cake will taste like curry. I'm like, ooh, that does not taste, <laughs> that doesn't sound like a good switch. 
right? But that's what happens. Again, and Paul says, you know what? And if you're missing even one piece of your recipe, what happens to your dish? I'm like, ooh, not so good, right? And so what ends up happening is in trading, it's the same thing. If you've tried trading and you struggled, if you've tried trading and you've lost, it's not because you don't know trading or you're stupid or smart or anything like that. Oftentimes it's because we don't have the recipe and in the right order. But when you can dumb down trading and focus in and a laser focus on those specific things that you need, and then you repeat and rinse, what all of a sudden starts to happen is you start to gain consistency because you are doing your recipe over and over. So what happens every time you do it? Your dish gets a little bit better and better. And that's how trading is. One of, so what we focused on when I was new was let's, let's dumb all this down into patterns. Let's dumb all this down into patterns. See, when you analyze a trade, there are dozens of variables that you must compute in an instantaneous decision. That sounds pretty darn hard. But what we can do is start searching for patterns, which really just kind of pulls it all together, all those different variables into certain looks. And then we assign probability and then we assign risk. And now if we can do that over and over, we can gain consistency in our trading where it's not anymore a coin flip, which is all a trade is. For most people, a trade is just a coin flip. You win or lose, stock goes up, stock goes down. It's a zero sum game. But if you can use your recipe and do it consistently, you will start to build your skills and gain that consistency. All of a sudden, over time, your dish starts tasting pretty good. Then you start adding your own flavor to it, right? Now you start to ad lib it a little bit, and now you are a chef. And so that's what we want to be doing as trainers. Now, the one thing with patterns to remember is that when you learn patterns, no matter what anybody tells you, that patterns only work during certain times of day. So if you have certain patterns that are shorter, they only really work at the open. If you have certain patterns that are a little bit longer, they tend to work towards the middle and the close. So the setups for each stage are different and need to be managed differently. The open, which is like your first one hour, is what I focus on. I focus on it because it's characterized by price discovery. It's characterized by volatility. The open, which is your first hour of the market, is where the action happens. That's where you get the big spikes up and down in a stock, but that's also where you get to figure out which stocks are even gonna be worth a damn to trade that day. And so the open has a lot of good things going on in. A lot of people I know, professional traders even, they never trade during the first 30 minutes. They like to let the market settle. I was never a believer in that. Why? Because the market is the wildest during that first 30 minutes. So if it's the wildest at the first 30 minutes, I want to corral that. And what we found is that if you can apply certain patterns to those first 30 minutes, you can provide structure and context and corral that power and make profits while limiting your risk. The other part is that it's important to know the type of market we're in so that we can increase our probabilities because just as you do some of these patterns to the long side, meaning you're betting on a stock to go up, just as many times you will be hoping to go short because stocks are gonna go down. And so we've gotta learn how to do them the same way. So the first hour, this is known as the price discovery period. The characteristics of this period, which is where I focus. The reason I focus on it is for two reasons. Number one is it's where the action is. Number two, I didn't become a trader to sit in front of the damn computer all day. I don't want to trade all day. 
Anybody ever sit in front of the computer train all day till 4 p.m.? It's awful. It's debilitating. You're beat. You don't want to talk to your mom. You don't want to talk to your wife. You definitely don't want to talk to your kids. Definitely don't want to talk to anybody you work with. You're beat. You're emotionally broke down. But if I wanted to just do a nine to five, I would just sit there in the office like I used to when I was actually working in a job. You know, I worked in a job till I was age 28, right in that cubicle. Right? I work in that cubicle. And if I was going to just trade all day, I might as well just get nine to five. Right. It's no different. You sit in the front of the computer, hit buttons. Right. That's your nine to five. And that's trading. I want to become a trader so that I can do this stuff that Indian people don't get to do because our parents don't let us. We just go have fun, meet chicks, drink beer, hang out, travel, all that kind of fun stuff. And so guess what? I like to trade that open because there's action, but also allows me to live my life, right? So the first hour, we like it because there's high volatility. Stocks will either be gapping up or down, usually reacting to news. We trade a lot around news. I don't predict the news. I wait till after the news comes. Then we start to analyze how it's acting the stock to that news. And then we make a decision whether we might be able to get into this. Once a stock hits news and it spikes up, it doesn't usually mean that it's done, even if you miss that first spike. Usually, momentum begets more momentum. So an opening spike of some good news or good earnings usually will be gapped more upside or downside. And so we definitely need to always be looking for that. I like the open because you get the large range. You get the most volume during that time too. And then, of course, the best follow through happens on these setups. You can capture huge percentage gains in a very, very short time. So that's always a plus. So tips for making, tips for trading the open. Number one, you want to make a watch list, right? So how do you make a watch list? Watch list is just a group of stocks that you're going to trade or at cryptos. So how do you find them? I want to run a handful of basic scans every single day to make my watch list. So I use a program called TC2000. So this layout um, is personally made. TC2000, you can make infinite numbers of layouts. So like I have layouts for all different types of stuff, but this is my main layout, okay? On TC2000, I run scans. Scans is just a list of conditions to narrow down the 8,000 stocks and ETFs there are and funnel them down into a shorter watch list, okay? So a handful of scans that I run every day. So I run a liquid gainer scan. A liquid gainer scan is just a momentum scan. It's a momentum scan based on percentages and volume, looking for really the best movers of the day, okay? So I run this scan at night, looking for potential patterns that I might like. So I trade on the daily chart, which is your bigger picture chart. Now, if anybody doesn't know anything about trading, you know, just put it in there and Josh will send you, uh, put in, you know, your name and your phone number, email, whatever. Josh will send you um, an intro course. So you can kind of follow, follow back up through this webinar. Once you go through that, this is a little bit second degree and we'll get this thing going. So your daily chart is, you know, where all your idea generation comes from. So daily charts are for idea generation. Intraday charts are for execution. Daily charts are for idea generation. Intraday charts are for execution. Execution means how, where and how you enter, meaning like the entries and exits, where your daily chart is where your big picture idea, your thesis. It's very important to have it like that. Because a lot of times people focus on one time frame and not the other. And what happens is they crisscross. Unless you have total alignment where your idea generation 
and your execution match, all of a sudden you'll have a losing trade. And so it's very, very important. That's called multiple time frame alignment. Multiple time frame alignment, which is the most important thing that you need in trading. So I run a liquid gainer scan. A liquid gainer scan is scanning anything for a move that's 2% or more on higher than average volume, 1.5 times relative volume. And then put in a price parameter for the price of stocks you like to trade. So it's above 10, under 10, or all stocks. I do all stocks because I don't care. I'll trade anything. So I go through the liquid gainer scan and I start filtering out what are the best stocks to trade. Things that could have great range. Three things that could have great range, um, things that have are breaking out of patterns, right? So those are very, very important. So like something like this, I would flag. Why? This is a stock that's breaking out on its daily chart. See how it's breaking out? You've tested this level four different times. Anything that you test more than three times, so a level, one time, two time, three time, four times, anything more than three is considered a hot breakout unless it's extended or overbought, which is always important. That's your caveat, okay? So something like this, I would put on my watch list. So I like to go down the list and start to build out my watch list. When I'm going through the liquid gainer scan, I'm looking for a handful of things. I'm looking for flat top breakouts, base breakouts, flag breakouts. I'm looking for pullback plays. I'm looking for pullback plays, such as 9 EMA pullbacks, quick pullbacks, moving average pullbacks, price support pullbacks. So there's 18 different setups that I would trick. So I'm looking for those type of patterns. Remember, we're trying to dumb down all those variables into certain looks. Uh, Greg, it could be one to four hours, depending on you know how much I talk. So just put your seatbelt on and have some fun. One to four hours. That is my promise to you, my friend. So I go through. Yes, he does. Uh, Paul does lots of webinars, but I like to be the front man. At some point, the student becomes the teacher. That's always the case. <laughs> so now I'm going through making sure that I'm making a watch list of proper momentum stocks, stocks that are um, getting out of some zone. So run a liquid gainer scan. Now, on the other side of things, flip the liquid gainer scan upside down. So you're looking for any stocks that have broken down 2% or more on higher than average volume, and then you want to filter through those at night. Do these, you know, right before you go to sleep so they're fresh in your mind. Always remember that. You want them fresh in your mind. So we're looking for these duds. Why are we looking for these duds, these stocks that are down a lot? We're looking for these stocks that are down a lot because they could be potential shorts for second day or third day type of plays. So that becomes very, very important. The third thing that I do is I run a scan for gappers, stocks that have news out, stocks that have some type of news out. I'm looking for anything that has news out that's sending a stock running pre-market. You can use a scanner like a Trade Ideas, or you can use a website like uh, thestockmarketwatch.com. So you got two different aspects to find stocks that have news where you're moving around pre-market. So I compile all those onto a list. Like today, these were this was my list, right? So I had uh, Bazoon, Junts. I have a handful of these that I think are just ready to go. These are the stocks that have fresh news out that I think could make potentially a move at the market open. So once you've got your list to go, now what we want to be doing is having a few different rules in place before you even make a trade. So number one, you never want to chase anything. Chase means when something is a big spike, you just buy into that spike. A chase is usually like, you know when something's running and you go, oh shit, 
I need to get that, that's usually a chase. Volatile stocks. Hey, Greg, why don't you chill out, baby, and get your ass on a desktop? That's your only option. Volatile stocks, you never want to chase. Always remember when you're trading momentum to scale out. Take partial profits, which is something we'll talk about. Avoid putting in new positions after 11 a.m., which is when you're trading the open. The open goes from 9.30 to 10.30. Number next one, this is always important, is have a daily max loss. A daily max loss when you're day trading is really important. I'm only allowing myself to lose $200 today, $500 today, whatever it might be. That's important. Daily max loss has saved me from so much. I used to, when I was a new trader, I'd have swings every day, $20,000, $30,000 sometimes. I would just go wild. Some days I'd make money, some days I'd lose 20, and every, every day is a roller coaster. But what you find out as you get better at trading is that when you're really having a big loss day, they're never as big as your big win days. So you want to have a max loss. Allow yourself a certain limit of what you're willing to lose. And then when that hits, you get out. You can always come back from a small loss. Meaning like if I lost 500 bucks, it's not a big deal. But if I lose a thousand bucks, and maybe that's a little bit too much for my account size, that might take me a few days to kind of recover. So you want to always keep your daily loss at something that's not going to ruin your day. So think about what your account size is. Say it's $50,000. Well, maybe you're going to put your max loss at $500 or $1,000. That's what I'm willing to risk in a day. If it's at $100,000, maybe you're a little bit big, right? So everybody's going to be a little bit different. If you're at $3,000, maybe your max loss is going to be $100. So you want to always do that to preserve your mental capital. See, when you lose, it's not just the capital you lose, but it's also your mental capital, right? It wears on your brain and it throws you off. And so we always want to have the ability to save our mental capital. Maybe Greg and maybe not. So let's talk a little bit about quick pullback buys. So a quick pullback buy is a momentum stock that has a strong run at the open and then has a pullback to some type of support as traders take profit. So this is an interesting setup for a couple different reasons. Usually when you get something at the open, what typically happens is you get a spike. And then that spike either consolidates and then goes again, or it starts to pull back to some level of support. And so what we want to be doing is our pullback setup, right? Our pullback setup, we want to make it so that we can buy as it's pulling back so we're not chasing and then we're gonna wait till it hits some level of support and then we'll take the trade. So we're not chasing it and our risk is really limited. That's gonna be just one of the most important things that you can do when you're a trader. So what we're looking for is a strong upward movement in the morning, preferably be at higher than average volume. We're looking for a quick pullback. It's either the 9 or 20 EMA. We want low volume on that pullback, indicating it's just profit-taking versus heavy selling. I want to buy that first pullback. And don't worry, we'll have some examples. I want to buy that first pullback with the stop below the last low. A great setup will be when you find that intraday setup, with something that has a good look on its daily chart that has momentum. Remember, you want to match your intraday with your daily. So this quick pullback buy is an entry point that you're going to be doing on an intraday chart. So I use five-minute charts. So when I'm setting up my charts on TC2000, or you can use Finviz or a free stock charts for those of you guys that don't have a charting program, 
program. Use freestockcharts.com. It's the free version of this. You can make it look fairly similar to mine. Um, I can set it up for you guys or in class or whatever we need, uh, but you can make it look fairly similar. So see on your intraday chart, right? You have different time frames. You can trade 15 minute charts, 30 minute charts, hourly. You can even dumb them down to a minute. I like to go with a five minute chart. The reason I go with the five minute chart is it gives you the smoothest look while still being able to be precise with entries. So what we're looking for is a very, very specific look when we're looking at intraday charts. So this blink, see this blink, see how it gapped up today? It went from 725, it gapped up to $8. So it's gapping up about 10%. It's running on earnings the last couple of days. See yesterday? Blink charging swings a profit. So this stock had some type of earnings out. It had some type of earnings out that is saying by the movement that maybe it's got good earnings out, right? Something's going on with this thing where earnings are out and it's causing it to gap. Gap means it's making that pre-market spike. Gap means it's making that pre-market spike, okay? So what we're going to be doing when we see those type of earnings, guys, is something very, very specific, okay? So you've got the earnings out. Now, what do you do, right? That's always the question. What do you do? You've got to wait for a setup, right? So when you see... When you see this type of gap, when you see this type of gap, you've got to do a handful of certain things, all right? You've got to do a handful of certain things. So what we need to be doing is as this thing gaps up, notice how what we want to do always on your charts, keep a 9 EMA, 20 EMA, and VWAP. So these are your intraday indicators. So guys, indicators are used for a couple things. They're never used to buy or sell, all right? Always a key. They are never used to buy or sell. What they're used for is to help guide us in certain trading decisions. So what you'll see when you have this kind of gap up and that kind of spike at the open, what we want to be doing is waiting for a pullback. So you can see like you've got two options at the open. When you're trading, everything is just a map, all right? Everything is a map, meaning that whatever can happen, you've got to map up. So at the open, you have two different options. You can gap up and it can consolidate here at highs and then break out. The second option, if it doesn't do that, is to come in and say, all right, I'm going to wait for a pullback. So what we like to do is wait for a pullback to the 90 EMA, only at the open. So I use this at the open. It's not a midday setup. When it taps into the 9 EMA and I get a green candle to hold. So it's got a hold here at the 9 EMA, one green candle, all right? As this green candle is holding, you're going to take a trade in this candle with a stop under the last low. Now, when you have something like that, you have a low risk entry with an easy target. So how support and resistance works, how support and resistance works is... When you get a stock that's popped up at the open and you pulled back, now you have a range. You have a potential target right back to your old high because that's where it was. Price has a memory. So when you get something that's sitting at a particular level and it comes back, you want to be selling back into that level because remember, price has a memory. If it got sold off at 850, what's going to happen is this is going to end up acting as resistance. And so once you get back into that area, it's going to come back down. Whoa. So you want to be selling off into that. And so that's why I like this quick pullback glove type of trade because now you have an area where you can sell into. And that becomes really, really important when you're thinking about trade. 
Now you can do this also on the short side. So like notice this stuff, this is X-ray. So see how like you got on the daily chart, you've got this nice kind of easy go lucky base over here. So this is called a bear flag. So when you gap down on earnings, you're breaking the bottom of this bear flag. So what we're doing intraday is looking for our potential entry point. So you can see what happens here. See how you gap down and you spike down at the open? Now there's only two options. You either consolidate at the open and you break down. That's your ORB, which we learned the last webinar, or you're gonna pull back to your 9 EMA. So as this thing starts to pull back, you don't know where it's going to pull back. Does it pull back here, 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 here? Does it keep going? Doesn't matter. What you're doing is you're waiting for a candle to hold. So you need a red candle to hold. So see how it taps in the nine? Then you get a red candle to hold here. So as this happens, that's where you're going to short. That red candle gives you the confirmation that the trade is real, that it's going to hold. So now you, what you want to be doing is shorting. You put a stop above your last high, and now you're going to be playing this thing back towards the lows. So what's going to happen is it's all reward to risk. right? You're going to risk 50 cents to potentially make $3. So you have structure around your trade. So it's just a very, very simple one. Now, the thing is this. Say it's pulling back and it just keeps going. You don't take the trade. You wait for a red candle to hold to give you confirmation that that level is true. And then you take the trade. Because if you just short it, meaning betting on it to go down in a vacuum, that's not going to work. You're going to have a very low probability trade. So you got to wait for that red candle to hold, and that's when you take the trade. Now, the beauty of the trade is, look, sometimes they don't work. So say you get this red candle to hold, and then it starts to go up. Well, when it breaks over your 9 EMA, you could just get out of the trade. When it breaks above your 9 EMA, you could just get out of the trade. So it's no big deal. So what we want to be doing is really managing our risk. We want to have tight risk meaning our stop losses, and then we want to have multiple dollars, of course, of potential reward. And if we can get those, well, now we're in the big game, right? Now we're into the big game where something might just go down the way we like. Trading is always just a matter of simple reward to risk. CLLS. So this is Cialis. So <laughs> Cialis, you can see on the daily chart. See how you got one test here, two tests here, three tests. The fourth test, it breaks out. And it's got a gap up here. It's got a good gap up here on earnings. So it's got some type of news out. That's why it's moving. See how it closed the previous day at 31. So the fact that it's opening at 35 is really good, right? That's, that's great. So we have this big gap. It's telling us that the market likes the news. So now what we want to be doing is waiting for a proper entry to get in to our trade. Easy enough. So, well, I'm 36 years old, so I might want to start looking into the Cialis. No, I'm just kidding. Look at that. I'm built like a rock. So see how you gap up here? It doesn't hold. So what you want to be doing is see how you have this really orderly pullback. Really orderly pullback. You want to wait till it tests the 9 EMA. And you get a green candle to hold. You want to check. You want to test the 9 EMA. And then you get a green candle to hold. So as this green candle is holding, you're going to take the trade. Put your stop right under the 9. And now your first target is going to be back up to this way. So you've got potential, say, two, three dollars of upside for risking maybe 25, 30 cents. And that's where we want to go with trading. Can we get a high upside while risking minimum? And guys, don't worry about the price of the stock. 
when you're trading. If you're trading Cialis and you can only buy 100 shares because you've got a smaller account, that's okay. If it runs two, three dollars, well, guess what's gonna happen? You can still even at 100 shares make a few hundred bucks. That's a nice day for somebody with a small account. If you have a bigger account, you have a thousand shares, good, you're gonna make thousands. Sure, sometimes we'll find hot ones that are $8 stocks, $5 stocks, $3 stocks, but it doesn't matter. If you can just consistently find patterns and rip off a couple hundred dollars at a time when you have a small account, you will build your account pretty fast where it's not gonna necessarily matter whether you're finding home run trades. You know, that's always a pie in the sky. When I was a new trader, that's all I want to do is trade penny stocks, find the home run trade. I wanted to find some penny stock that would make 300, 500,000 percent gain so that I would just have all this money. But you know what happens? You have to take like 100 of those trades and keep losing to find that one home run. They don't exist. There's a reason it's a penny for a reason. It sucks. Why else would it be a penny? Nobody wants it. That's the way trading goes, you know? And so what happened, like when I was new and I had a small account, one of my first accounts, I was always trading these little small guys. They just never move or they don't do anything. And then randomly some other one will go and you're like, shit, like I should have been in that one. And so then you're playing hot potato. You end up chasing that one because it started to move and now you're too late. And that's always the nature of the game. What settled my trading and my consistency was when I got the price parameter out of my head and I just said, you know what? I'm just going to trade what I see. I'm just going to trade what I see so that I can just make money consistently. I don't care if I'm going to be able to, I don't care if I'm going to be able to do this or that or whatever it might be. All I care about is the consistency of making just a little bit of money every single day. Does that make sense? And when you can do that, well, now you're really in, now you're in for a little bit of a treat, okay? And so that's, don't worry necessarily about price parameters, worry about just the patterns. This pattern also works, first of all, let's talk a little bit on the, short side too. So let me grab a couple of short setups on this because we can do this on the short side also. Hold on here. Let me get a couple examples. I take this trade all the time. So guys, you know, and this type of trade, it's, it's fairly simple, but it's something I use for last 10 years. Like it's not something that like is a pie in the sky where you're like, oh man, I'm never going to be able to find it. What I try to do, rather than just always hunting for this type of trade or that type of trade, is always looking for stuff that I can just find every day. You know, I find that when I can find them at least every every day or whatever, well, that makes it a lot easier. Like now we're talking about, right, we're talking about being able to trade consistently because when you're day trading, the key is just to find things that show up all the time. So we talk a quick pullback buy. So this is Pacey. So this is stock that gapped down on bad earnings. See, this one's $100. I don't care. Whatever it might be, I'll take it. So see how it gaps down here? And then it starts to spike off the open. And you run right into your 9 EMA. This is a five-minute chart. You want to wait for that red candle to hold. Notice how this red candle right here. Once you get the red candle to hold, now you can short this using your 9 EMA as a stop. And then you can play this thing back down to the downside. Now, look, they won't always come right back down to the low. So use a little common sense, right? If you risk 50 cents and you're up, say, three, four dollars, scale out. Take half your profits, take a third of your profits, but keep scaling out, meaning take, keep taking profits. Because even if you have 100 shares, well, yeah, if you gain three, four dollars, well, guess what's going to happen? You gain three, four dollars. Now you're in the game. And so you can do this both long side, short side. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about the price of it. And this setup, I mean, I've done it five dollar stocks, two dollar stocks, one dollar stock. As I've gotten a little bit older, I've been trading a little bit higher price stocks because 
man, life's too short sometimes to be trading around in small bombs. Now, the pattern also works in cryptocurrency. So this is ETH. Does anybody uh, just raise your give me a hand hand if you trade cryptos? It's like I don't, I know if I need a primer or not. Good, 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 good. Oh, Nick, man, you got to get into this. Juice, you got to use the gap down scan. Always use the gap down and gap up. Scan for gaps, 3% or more in the morning. I'm not familiar with an, what an MT4 is, but I'm guessing you probably have it. Now, see, I like this ETH. So it, in cryptocurrencies, for those of you guys that don't trade it, in cryptocurrency, you don't have gaps because it's a 24-hour market. So what you're looking for is just big spikes out of nowhere. Those big spikes out of nowhere are like your gaps. So when you see something that's an ETH and you've got like a nice daily chart pattern, you got a nice daily chart pattern. Not a chance, Jason. Not a chance. Maybe, maybe not. Now, see how this thing just scaps out of nowhere. 672. Now, what we want to be doing, guys, is waiting. So you got this spike. It goes from 636 to 672. 40 bucks, right? Pretty good. So now what we want to do when you get that straight up pump. You want to wait. Your nine EMA is your shortest term moving average. It's your short term moving average. It's your closest moving average. So what we want to be doing is waiting for that pullback to the nine EMA. You want to let it test. Green candle to hold. Now your stop just goes under your nine EMA. You're going to be buying in this candle. And now you're playing this thing back to the upside. It's a very, very simple pattern because if you get a green candle to hold, let's say, and the next one breaks under, well, guess what? You're just out of it. Hey, Mark, who cares if it crashes like crazy? You're still just going to get out for a few pennies. I don't care if any stock I get in crashes because I won't be in it. Let it crash. Let somebody else suffer for it. No, I'm just kidding. I never want that to happen, but... You're going to use a tight stop loss. Who cares if it crashes? Who cares if it goes to zero? You don't have to be in anything. That is the beauty of trading. You choose what you're in. You want to be a sucker? Well, okay. Then you're going to be in. You want to, you want to be playing and making, make, making money. You don't got to worry about no crash. So buy, set your stop, let her rock. And yeah, guys, they will sometimes not work, of course, 100%. The key is this. If I can get out with a small loss, but my upside is dollars, then the math works out long term. The math will work out long term, and now we're in the big game. Now we're in the big game. So like something like this, okay, so you're going to risk, say, $2. Well, you have $2. I mean, your nearest target is... Your nearest resistance is $8 away, right? And you can see from the momentum of this, always look at the daily chart to see what kind of momentum something has. You can see from the momentum of it that it has the ability on a daily basis to move $50, $60, $70 maybe. So we know that we have risk to reward on our favor. Sure, we may get stopped out small, but if it works, Mark, right, then we're going to cover multiple times our risk so that when we do get stopped out, it's not a huge deal. Check this out. So this is BCA. So this has been one of my main money makers of the year. I love this damn thing. 
So you can see this thing started to run around six, 60 bucks. You guys see that? So it does a base breakout. Base breakout in cryptos is a very, very powerful pattern. The mo Probably the second most powerful pattern you can do in cryptos and in stocks is a base breakout pattern. So you go through the base breakout and you have this huge run to 1600. Guys, you can make so much money in something like this. If you had even 10 damn shares of this thing and you get a run like this, I mean, you're making some real money, aren't you? Right, when it goes up, thousand bucks. Now you can make 10 Gs for the keys on something small. Now, obviously we're not gonna hold it up the whole way, but that's just the nature of longer trading. So base breakout, so this thing's a base breakout, most powerful pattern or second in cryptocurrency. Now, as this thing comes up, you can see like on your daily chart, you start to build a flag pattern. Flag pattern is also a powerful pattern. It's a consolidation pattern. Now, what we wanna be doing, notice how like right here, you have this breakout, one test, two tests, three tests, four tests. Remember, if you're brand new, just put in your phone number, email address, uh, you know, Josh will hook you up with the intro course. You can kind of get the gist of some of the basics. So as you start to spike out of here, this is like your gap. No different. It's just like your gap. You're going to count that big spike as a gap. In cryptos, there are no gaps. Now, as soon as you pull back to that 9 EMA, so you always want this thing to be that first one. As soon as you pull back to that 9 EMA, red candle in the 9 EMA, green candle to hold, you're going to be buying in this candle. Stop goes under that last low. And now you're playing this thing back to the upside. Now you're going to be playing this thing back to the upside. So what you always want to do, though, where I see a lot of students of mine make mistakes, something's pulling back. And then, like, it just pulls back, 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 back. And they just buy it without the confirmation of the candle to hold. And then you end up getting smoked out because what? Right? You didn't get the confirmation of the candle to hold. So wait for the candle to hold. That's going to be huge. Once you're in it, now you'll be back into the upside. Always scale out. So like into what this is how I like to do things. If I get through in cryptos, especially in stocks, I'm a little bit less. Cryptos, you get better reward to risk. If I get three or four to one reward to risk, meaning if I risk the dollar and I got three or four or more, I'm looking to potentially sell some. Not all, but some. I'm looking to potentially sell some because I want to always cover my risk. We want to get ourselves paid. Then what I do is I put a stop loss at my buy price and make it a free trade. So it's on the casino at that point. So what I want to be doing, sell some, put a stop loss at my buy price. That means where I bought it, I put the stop loss. So if it goes under, I just get out flat on the rest, but I took a little bit of profit. And then we want to be keep shredding this thing to the upside. Oof, EOS, this has been my big money maker of this year on cryptos besides BCA. So you can see this thing comes out of this range. This is a flag pattern at about six bucks. See how tight this range is? Woof. So this thing rips to nine, does a flag pattern again. By the way, for my old, I see some of my MTI students in here. You guys should have been shredding the crap out of this thing. So then you get flag again, flag again, right? And you're off to the races. So this thing's got tons of momentum. Okay, so a 90 EMA pullback on this, a quick pullback is usually you're going to get like some type of flat top breakout, meaning a consolidation, and you're going to rip, have a big rip. So that big rip counts as your gap. Okay, in the stock market, you'd have a gap, in cryptos, it's going to be a big rip. What you're going to be doing is waiting for that first pullback to the 90 EMA. The first pullback with the 9 EMA. You want that green candle to hold? Green candle to hold. Then your stop will go under those last lows. And now you're in this thing low. And you can shred this thing back to the upside. So what happens and why it's an awesome trade is that 
See, your risk is low, but your upside is high. Risk is low, upside is high. That's what we want with momentum. Risk low, upside high. Risk low, upside high. Keep banging that into your heads, guys. Risk low, upside high. We want to always be in the habit of getting momentum stocks on those pullbacks with low risk because we know that momentum can bet, beget more momentum. Always know three price points before you take a trade. Before you take a trade, my mentor used to make me do this. I, to this day, have just journals and journals of trades. I'm more El Natural. Like, I like to write things down. Uh, but everybody's a little bit different. But I'm always writing down, like, everything I can on, like, how I'm feeling, what I'm doing, whatever it might be. So you always want to know, before you take a trade, three points. Write them down if you're having trouble with trading. Write them damn down. No, it's only going to take two seconds. You need to know your entry price, right? Depending on the setup, there's 18 different patterns I personally trade, right? So depending on the pattern, my entry price will be a little bit different. Where's your stop loss? Meaning how much risk do you have? What's your first potential profit target? Now, I don't believe even having static profit targets, where you're like, it's got to hit this. I like to be a little bit more dynamic and make sure that you know, I'm able to take as much out of a trade as I can. Sometimes they'll blow past your pro, pro, uh, price targets. So you want to be a little bit dynamic with it. Always scale out, meaning you're taking those partial profits once you cover your risk. I use limit orders. I never use market orders unless it's a, I'm in a jam. It's my oh shit button, especially in stocks with spreads. I always like to move my stop loss to break even after taking Partial profits. Add to your winning positions. Don't add to losers. Meaning if you're down on a stock, don't keep adding to it, especially if it's a day trade. If it's a day trade. So, guys, so like a quick pullback buys an opening setup, right? It's for the first hour. So why would you want to keep adding to the loser, right? If you're only going to hold it for an hour, who damn cares? There's only so much time you have in the thing. So you want to make sure that you are always, always making sure you don't add to the losers. Don't double down on a bad mistake, right? You make a mistake in life, you don't double down on it. You got to leave that thing alone. Sometimes you got to walk away. Then calculate how many shares you got to buy. Figure out your risk. Figure out your stop loss, right? That'll, that'll be your shares. Meaning if I had a 10 cent stop loss and I had a hundred dollar risk on the trade, I wanted to risk 100 bucks, I'd have a thousand shares. If I had a $1 stop loss and I had a hundred dollar stop loss, I'd have 100 shares. Now, if you guys are looking for a more advanced program, we are doing our 60 day boot camp. We do them every other month. We'll be doing our trading challenge in this boot camp. So I have 18 setups. I learned quick pullback buy is one of them. We do four at the market open. If you're a part-time trader, my mentor, Paul, this lovely gentleman, we got to find him a little bit better picture. <laughs> he teaches three classes in our current boot camp also. So it is meant for day traders and part-time traders. I do both. I frankly believe everybody should do both. So how we do our boot camp, right? How we do our boot camp is a handful of different ways. Number one, we have a course book. So we have a 200-page course book. That's everything you need to know. I do class live four days a week, just like this, on GoToWebinar. Live four days a week. Guys, if you're not learning how to trade live, it is hard to learn how to trade. If you are not learning live, it is hard to learn how to trade. Why? Trading is a job. Even if you're doing it for a hobby, you want to just make a little extra money or do your retirement accounts. You're competing against people that do it for a living, right? So you've got to attack it with the same way. It's a job. 
when I started, when I was just doing this just to make money, I was never good at it. But when Paul was like, you know, think about what a doctor goes through, a lawyer goes through, an engineer goes through, a teacher goes through, a nurse goes through, whatever it might be. What did they go through before they ever learn how to trade or ever learn how to do what they do? There's a lot that goes into it. Trading's no different. It's a job. So we go class four nights a week. Okay. After class is done that first month, I put everybody into none, Greg. Nobody's ever asked me for a refund. Crazy. After first month of class, I put everybody into my chat room. I put everybody into my chat room. I don't like troublemakers. So I put everybody in my chat room. You guys get to watch me trade. Why is this important? You've got to watch somebody else trade. That's how you take. That's how you take your book knowledge and turn it into real life knowledge. If you just go on YouTube or watch somebody's online videos and boom, you think you're going to be a trader? Not a chance. Not if you're going to compete against me or my students because we're well trained, but we've gone through the whole gamut. So you've got to learn in real time. So after the first month of classes, I put everybody into my chat room. I get on a webinar every day. I trade in front of the students, meaning I don't go to webinar, a screen share. I have my trading platform up and I trade in front of them. That becomes huge. I trade in front of them so that they can follow along, right? And see what's happening in real time. See what's happening in real time. So you can watch as you learn. During this time, we'll be putting our students on trading simulators. So you guys can start trading, paper trading. And what we'll do during the days while you guys are trading and practicing your strategies, you guys will start recapping your trades. We have two different ways. So we've got spreadsheets and online spreadsheets where you can start tracking your trades, putting snapshots in. Uh, we also have a website that we use that has um, where you can just upload the trades and it starts keeping track of all your statistics. Guys, statistics is the best thing and the most important thing that you can do when you're new as a trader. If you don't have data on what you do right and what you do wrong, it's hard to pinpoint what and where you need to go. You know, if a student comes to me and says, hey, I'm having trouble, but you don't have data to show me, it becomes very subjective. It's like, I'm going to ask you, well, what's going on? And you're going to say, oh, I don't really know. Like, I'm not trading that well, right? And now we're in the middle of nowhere. So you want to be making sure that you track your trades. I have a journal system that we use that is a, that works, and it's very easy. It doesn't take much time. But that's going to be huge, all right? That's going to be huge. So you guys will be uploading those trades, and then we get a chance to look at them. So you can just email me the link or the file. I'll take a look at them. I will grade them. We have a system for that where you can have them already posted, and then we'll just be able to see them. Or you can use uh, the website uh, where it's automatically uploaded. Now. Our students get lifetime access to class, meaning that once you're in class, you can retake class as many times as you want. Each class is recorded and archived. I know a lot of you guys are from Australia and Finland and Scotland. You're going to probably watch more videos than live. That's okay. You can email me or just hit me up with what questions you have after class is done. That's going to be huge, right? You just hit me up, and we have a student community, too, where you guys can chit-chat with each other. That's always going to be key. So you can re-watch class, retake them as many times as you want. My thing with this is that I have one boot camp. 
I have one boot camp. I don't sell other classes. I don't give you a half ass class and then try to bullshit you on another class. That's usually a company that does that. They're usually scammers. I pour everything I got in the one hot class and then that's a wrap. It's got everything that I have in my brain. And that's the way you've got to do this because if you're going to learn how to trade, why would there be some other damn class, right? So always kind of remember that and then get lifetime access. I have students that have been with me for years and years that have come back into boot camp and hang out. In this class, we'll be adding in a cryptocurrency education program to our boot camp. So it will be, I don't, you can buy my book for 3,000 bucks. You can buy my book for 3,000 bucks. I don't sell the book alone. You won't know what to do with it. Nobody learns from books. You name me one person that has brain surgery from reading a book, I'll give you some money. So in this class, we have cryptocurrency education boot camp. So now you've got access to all of this fun stuff. So let's talk a little bit about our trading challenge. All right. We're going to put everybody on trading simulators. The top performer on the simulator, so we'll have certain rules on share size, the amount of money you can trade. It'll be on paper. I'm going to fly you down to Destin. I've had over 200 students over the years come and stay at my house. It's a frat house, but it is fun. So I'm going to fly you down. You're going to stay at my house in the room across from me. <laughs> We're going to be bunkies. Right? You're going to hang out for a week or whatever we need to do. Trade alongside with me. Watch how I trade. I'm going to watch how you trade. And I'm going to put you on a one-on-one -on -one mentorship for six months where we'll have a personal chat open between me and you. Between me and you. So during the trading day, if you need to get a hold of me, chat with me, we can chat. I'll be working with you via Skype, Google Hangouts, phone, whatever you need every single week or as many times you need for six months. I'm going to train you into really whatever it is that we've got to do. So the winner comes in to get that. Guys, that's the wrap, right? That's the way it goes. If any of you guys want to talk to some former students, you want to talk to somebody uh, that's been with me for a while or somebody that's new, totally cool. I'll give you names. I'll give you phone numbers. I'll give you whatever it is that you need. You call them up and you ask, you won't see anybody say a bad thing about me. So remember, 60-day boot camp, 28 live classes. Everything's recorded, quizzes, homework, Q&As. It's built like a university class. We have market recaps, meaning after the trading day is done, we have a webinar recapping the trades. So you can see I bring out my profit and loss. Here's my trading platform. I made this much money, lost this much money. Then we talk about it. We put the students on trading simulators. We do trade plans. We have a private student community. You get lifetime access, 200 page course book, talent search contested, and I'm throwing in a cryptocurrency trading program in it. And all our students get three months access to our Bulls on Wall Street chat room. So you're gonna get three months to watch me trade. I do alerts. So you'll be able to follow along and do all that fun stuff. The first five people will get this for $2,300. Payment plans are available. Um, just put in your phone number if you want If you want to get a call on this. And uh, I'll have somebody give you a call. And we will get that thing going. So anybody that wants in uh, on the early board, early bird, just put in your phone number. I will have Mary Beth, this lovely lady. Or Omer, my best friend, I'll have them give you a call and we can talk about it. If any of you guys just want to talk about your goals and trading future, just put in your phone number. We can do a trading analysis, see where you're at, what kind of trading you need to do, and come up with a program that might be more special for you guys. Sometimes people are a little bit different. Sometimes people want to learn in different manners, so we can work with you guys on that. My friends... It's been fun. It's been real. It's been fast. Let me know if you guys have any questions. 
If you ask any questions earlier, um, they probably just, I have hundreds of people in this thing. I probably just missed it. So uh, just ask again and just put it in here and I will uh, make sure to answer you. Uh, one of the things guys remember about trading, this is a tough game. A lot of people learn how to trade, try to learn how to trade and they fail. Almost everybody loses money, but most people don't have the system in place or they haven't learned properly how to trade, right? They haven't been taught the ways. When I was new, I blew up three accounts. Why? Well, number one, yeah, I was damn stupid. Number two, I was reading books, I mean, you know, and trying to figure it out and then, you know, putting, putting money on the line and then guess what? I just lost. I didn't know what I was doing, right? And so we have to learn a system. Uh, we spend a lot of time on trading psychology, Mark. Uh, we've had trading psychology course. Um, instructors do videos and stuff for our boot camp, which is in our boot camp module page. I've had a Dr. Andrew Miniker, who's a trading PhD, trading psychologist, PhD, uh, do webinars for us. So all that stuff is around too. And then of course, I'm always uh, talking about that. So that's going to be uh, just huge. Uh, boot camp starts on Tuesday, I believe. So this Tuesday. And um, you guys, once we get you in the system, we'll mail you out the course book. You can start watching boot camp classes as soon as you want. You know, the cool thing about our boot camp is that everything is really organized. You know, so if you're looking at, you know, we have everything on a module page. So if you go on our 60 day bootcamp module page, right, all your class links, um, the forum, like everything you need is all right there, right? So everything will be right there, your quizzes, all the videos you need. And then all the documents, flashcards, study guides, scanners, grading trades. And then I have all my old, all my old boot camps on here. So you can come and watch boot camps from four years ago if you want. You know, you can see how I progressed too. Uh, what's an EMA nine and six? Uh, EMAs are just exponential moving averages, Nick. Uh, moving averages are just uh, an indicator. Uh, I think in our last webinar, we talked about kind of what they all do and how they work. Uh, so you might want to check that out. Otherwise, uh, you know, I'll make sure to just, you guys can email me if you have any questions. And guys, yeah, feel free to email me anytime you want. Um, I'm going to all add bulls on WS. Don't abuse this number. It's myself. Hey, Jack, this one is for new boot camp students. Uh, we're going to do something for some of the old ones because you guys have way more experience. Hey, Mr. Ichi, I have, uh, guys, uh, Ichi's asking, uh, have I used an ADXDI indicator? I haven't. I've actually not heard of it, so <laughs> I'm not sure. I haven't used it, though. I'd have to play around with it. Uh, Mark, is it true most people let their emotions take over and panic? No. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to let your emotions take over. If you're prepared, if you're prepared, if you've done your homework, you've trained your mind, your body also, to really get going, I mean, you're not going to be scared. If you've done everything you can, confidence comes from preparation. My confidence comes from knowing that every day I haven't taken shortcuts in my homework, my preparation, how I attack my study. Even at this age, after I've been doing this, I'm like 462 in dog years slash trading years. Yeah, I'm like the Yoda of trading, right? Um, I still prepare like as if 
I had never traded before, right? Like I'm like brand new. I'm still preparing like that, you know, making sure that I'm not hitting any weird spots, right? And so uh, emotions uh, don't take over for me. Yeah, I feel them, of course. Yeah, sometimes you get that kind of weird pit in your gut where you're like, oh, this is not working out. But now I know what to do. I feel that pit in my gut. Probably a good shot. I screwed up my trade. I'm going to react. Um, yes, you can use Nick e Trade Pro. Hey, Reginald, appreciate it. Hey, Justin Postma, I look forward to seeing you. Hey, Jason, what's up, baby? Hey, Nathan, good to see you've calmed down a little. Awesome to see the consistency. Uh, have I used Renko charts? Um, no, I haven't. Hey, thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. Good, good, good. What else? Oh, yeah. So, guys, a few people have asked me, can they use their thinkorswim? Yeah, I don't see why not. Arena, how you doing? Serena saying the level two makes her heart beat fast. Arena, I don't watch the level two. I don't think you need it. I mean, sure, like you have to look at it just to get into your trade, but I don't analyze it at all. Good, good, good. The first five people will get the cryptocurrency boot camp and the early bird pricing. So let me know. Uh, Kevin, why do you use VWAP and not Bollinger Bands? VWAP and Bollinger Bands are two separate things. Bollinger Bands are a measure of volatility. VWAP is a measure of volume weighted average price. So they're just completely, they're not in the same hemisphere. Um, you could use both, frankly. Uh, Chris, I'm not that uh, particular on the payment plans. You know, if you want to work something out with one of my guys, you know, we, we'll get you in class. You know, I won't be a two stickler for the details on that. I'll work, we'll work with you. Hey, Eridus, how are you? Guys, Eridus is asking me, uh, why do I use five minutes and not one minute time frames? Uh, one minute time frames make me over trade, and they make me over trade a lot. Yes, Justin, everything will be uh, everything will be with you. And then also you can just log in right uh, onto the website and just go to the 60-day boot camp. You can register for the classes right there too. Uh, Greg, it's really the cheapest one on the market. I mean, you find me a cheaper one, I dare you. There isn't. Never seen one, at least. I don't even think it exists. You're just making that up. Why are you playing games, Greg? Stop playing games. 2300 bucks. And guys, this one is not just stocks, it's cryptocurrencies. 
Some people spend thousands of dollars just to learn shitty cryptocurrency classes. I combine everything into you will learn all different types of trading, day trading, swing trading, stocks, cryptos. It is the end all. You don't need other classes after this. You don't need to learn anything because I teach you all the trading. Hence why class is so damn long. You're going to be sick of me by the time this class is over. You're going to sit there, watch class, and be like, damn, he is so good looking, but I'm sure tired of hearing his voice. Diane Cano, I never heard, I've been in this business 10 years, never heard of Clay Trader. But I'm sure he's a nice guy. Good, good, good. Anybody else got any questions? Come on. Good, Sean. I look forward to it. <laughs> Mark, when you everybody that comes to my house, they get free access to these hats. He has as many hats you want. Guys, I'm in Destin, Florida. If anybody's ever in the neighborhood, you let me know. Yeah, Dianco, but what's in that course? Who the fuck knows? Mine's 60 days. Yes, everything is recorded and archived, guys. Every class, everything is recorded and archived. I got you, Nicholas. Good, 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 good. What else? What else? Hey, Justin, I haven't been to Holland before. I spent all summer last year in Europe. Um, I took my sisters. Now I got three really annoying sisters. You know, they bamboozled me into taking them to Spain. So I was there all summer in Europe. I went to Spain for a couple months, London, but mostly just Spain. I don't like going. I don't like when you, people go to Europe. They just go city to city every two days. So I spent... Two weeks in Barcelona, two weeks in Valencia, two weeks in Malaga. And then I made my way to London because I had a speaking event there. Um, it was pretty fun. I don't know how anybody gets anything done there. People are always having so much fun over there. In America, we have no fun. That's why we got mine. Yeesh. Hey, Greg, never heard of them. Hey, Greg, I got a guy. His name is Bob Wojanowski. He'll sell you a class for 30 bucks. He claims he's a millionaire. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> hey, go give your money to Tricky Ricky. Why would I search YouTube? I've been in this business forever. If I haven't heard of him, he don't exist. Hey. I'm Greg, I'm going to give you this guy's number, Tricky Ricky. He'll charge you $4, and he's got a YouTube channel. He might even show his wiener. Good, 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 man. If you're a, <laughs> if you're a close drive to Destin, come on by, man. Let me know. Give me a call. Let me know when you're going to be in the area. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Uh, we're going to do $30,000 buying power. Um, so like my students, they complete boot camp. They're eligible to trade in. Oh, I'm not taking offense, Greg. What I'm doing is giving you a favor. I'm saying you, I can introduce you to Tricky Ricky. Don't take offense. I'm saying I can give you an idea. I got this guy, Tricky Ricky. He's got a YouTube channel. Give him five bucks. 
He'll, he'll tell you exactly what he thinks. Hey, Mike, so $30,000 in buying power. Uh, we'll probably do 2,000 share size, and then we'll be good to go. Hey, Greg, I don't have competition. That's the whole point. That's the stupidest thing ever, guys. In, in life, if people you spend time thinking about your competition, how are you ever going to be the best? I think about how I'm going to get better every damn day. That's how I think. Because if I'm the best that I'm going to be, then I'm the best that I'm going to be, that I can be. Only idiots sit there and think about their competition and fret over it. If you're number one, and you're the best you can be, what else is there? Get out of here, Greg. Now, my friends, what else we got? Hell yeah, Zach. I look forward to having you. I look forward to having you. Big Ron, I look forward to having you. Thank you. <laughs> you know it. Good, good, good. Guys, I encourage you, feel free to use my number, use my email. Seriously, like I, I love chatting with people. You know, you don't have to be a student of mine to be interested in trading or get, getting better. You still got to go out and do it uh, every single day. Ah, uh, Kelson, is there anything I can do for you, buddy? You all right? Hey, just, uh, I got no thoughts. Hey, any man that does a good job, I'm a fan of. Um, I take my boat out to Crab Island, not often, maybe every other week. I mean, I take my boat out a lot, but, uh, you know, not always to Crab Island. Hey, Nick, man, you got to stop by my crib, man. What's going on? If you're here and you haven't been to the house, we got a whole group of traders out the street. I'm on old 98. Uh, there's a whole group of us out here. Yeah, Jack, the, uh, the next session will be the same. Good. Kelson, man, seriously, yeah, reach out, man. If you're just, uh, man, you need some reading material while you're hanging out or on the mend or whatever, man, I'm, I can, you know, make you some recommendations or whatever, man. I, I got you. Cool. Hey, Nick, I look forward to seeing you in August. We'll take the boat out then. Um, Zach, uh, OZ Safe Room? Uh, no, I'm not familiar. Uh, Chris, uh, we'll reach out to you. Yeah, I'll have Omar Mary Beth give you a call. Hey guys, as always, uh, anybody else got any questions? Man, I, seriously, it's an honor to always have so many people in here. Uh, I look forward to seeing everybody again. You know, Arena 818, is that Hawaii? Oh, Los Angeles. He was on the West. Got yeah, so, ah, fun times. I'm just teasing you, Greg. I mean, you got to relax a little bit. Trading's supposed to be fun. I'm just teasing. I tease everybody. Trading is boring, right? Stocks are for really boring people. We try to make a little fun once in a while.
I appreciate all the participation. Uh, I started trading, so I'm 36 years old. I started trading when I was 19, well, 18, but uh, the first year definitely doesn't count because I lost so much damn money. Oh, I made the priceless mistake, too. When I was a kid, man, I took out, you know, my student loan money. I was supposed to do it using my tuition for. I was trading stocks, with. I lost it all. Woof. That was not a fun thing to tell my dad. Thirty-six. <laughs> Thirty-six. I wish I was twenty-six. Damn. Hey, cool. I built out some black boxes today. One of my buddies, Greg uh, High and Bodek, he used to do uh, high frequency trading. He used to own this. Uh, he used to own an HFT company, uh, but he's the man at that stuff. Good, good, good. Anybody else got any questions? Well, hi, damn. Gee, Nathan, that is a that's a risk. You sold your car. How you getting around, Uber? Hey, Justin. Uh, I'm just insane. Like, uh, how do you do it when you take profit in your cryptocurrency? Do you just switch it to Bitcoin? Uh, I don't because Bitcoin's always a dud. So uh, I tend to switch mine to USD or USDT. Hey, Mr. Harper, uh, I, questions. How much attention do you give to level two time and sales price action? Or do you focus more on technicals in the chart? Uh, Mike, more technicals in the chart, uh, you know, you're always focused on price action, but I don't give any credence to level two. Because the thing is, if you don't have level three, your level two is broke. It's a joke. Hey, Zach, uh, I use TC2000. Guys, in boot camp, uh, I give you all my scans, all my layouts, everything. So you don't have to sit there and type them all in. Like I literally, like you can message me on TC2000. You know, my students do, and um, I I hit them up with my layouts, my scans, everything. Level two, you can't see if a big seller is coming in. That's false. That's an urban legend. It's a misnomer used by retail traders that don't technically trade for a living. Um, Zach, by the way, you could use other scanners, you know, if you had some scanning software you like. Um, the scans I have translate to it all, but like a lot of students just want theirs to look like mine. So I just send them the layout, they open it, and everything just works out. Uh, it just opens up. Uh, what do you think about options trading? Hey, Dianco, uh, Dion, Dionisio. Did I say it right? Shit. Um, I don't personally trade options. I got some friends that do, but it's just too much math for me. I like to grip and rip. I'm more in an action of trading. Um, I'm just not a fan of options. I, it just never stuck to me. Oh, yeah. Hey, Justin, how you doing? Justin's saying, what do you think about Elliott Waves? Uh, I've heard of them, but I personally don't use them. I think that um, the system I use with trends and stuff, you know, I mean, if you wanted to draw some waves on it, it's pretty easy. But, you know, you don't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily do anything. You know, Elliott Waves are just common sense. You know, if you have four big thrusts in a stock or a crypto, 
yeah, I mean, each one, if it gets smaller and smaller, yeah, it just means it's tired. And, you know, you don't need to quantify it with waves. Um, you'll just know that from the patterns. Good, good, good. Anybody else getting questions? Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> All right, folks, and that's a wrap. Go in, whoops. Oh, Nathan, uh, I used uh, Kraken, Binance, and GDAX, and Bittrex as my primary platforms. Hey, DMCO, I appreciate it, brother. Coo, coo, coo. Josh, who is the hat winner? Uh, Ryan1010 at Gmail. Ryan1010 at Gmail. Hey, email me or just text me and I'll make sure to get you out. Yo, hats. Yeah, and I got like, you know, all different types. So you, I'll send you some pictures. There you go, bro. As always, guys, it's been real. It's been fun. It's been fast. You guys email me if you need anything. Uh, anything. I'll get it to you. Yeah, and I did get a new shipment of hats in, too. So anybody, you know, you always hit me up. All right, peoples. Hoosh! Love you guys.